Okay, let me first introduce myself. My name is David Mascal. Uh, I've had an association with lions. I was born in Solai in Nakuru district. Uh, since a small boy, I've had a fascination with, uh, with lions in particular. And uh, uh, not so many years ago, I was invited to uh, work at Nairobi Animal Orphanage as a volunteer. And my main role there was working with lions, raising young lions, orphaned lions, uh, looking after them. Uh, sustained a few injuries and things like that, but it impassioned me. I have a passion for lions. And what I do today is an endeavor to, it, it actually does two things. It helps the community members hugely. In turn, it helps us, me, the country, in the context of saving predators from retaliatory killings, okay? By helping you as a Maasai, deterring the uh, predators, whether it's hyenas, whether it's lions, whether it's leopard, coming in and killing your livestock. And as a Maasai, mostly, you would prefer not to take revenge. And if it doesn't happen, if there's no need, you don't do it. So everybody gains all the way around. My name is Paul Kilelu. I'm the manager in Gusaro Sambu Conservancy. And I have been working with the Lights for Life to install uh, predator deterrent lights in the Conservancy. And this is because of uh, uh, a lot of uh, predation by leopards, hyenas, lions. We have already installed like over 100 bombers in this area. But uh, the demand is always increasing because uh, when you install like on this bomber, the, the predators that used to come to this bomber will migrate to another bomber which have, have no lights. So this one had no lights and it's, it has received frequent attacks by leopards and hyenas. So uh, the, 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 the reason is, this area is not far from um, Nairobi National Park and Pong Hills, and this is the only open space still remaining here, and all the predators come to to this side. So we have the highest number of leopards and hyenas in this area, and they, they are very problematic. Um, I first got involved in this about six years ago through a colleague of mine uh, called Michael Mbithi. He introduced me to the concept, and over a period of time, there's always been a certain amount of hit and miss, the way things go, and that doesn't quite work as well. The, what has evolved out of it over this period of time is a system which has the potential longevity of five years. I say potential, everything essentially hinges on the battery. Uh, the acquisition of batteries, we've tried different makes, uh, different types and stuff. You can say anywhere between two to five years. Okay, here we have a little 12 volt battery. Uh, seven, seven amp uh, 12 volt battery. On the top here, we have the key to the whole system, which is a little, uh, it's a flasher unit, a motor vehicle flasher unit for your indicators. That's what makes it go on off, on off, on off all night long. That's what it's evolved around. And on the front here, you have what's known as a charge control unit, which allows or controls the power into the battery during the daytime so it doesn't overcharge. At the evening time, this is all underneath the solar panel, and in the evening time when the power reduces on the panel, sends a message to this, which automatically transfers the power into the system, and that is what turns the system on over night time, but it runs right the way through the night. Then uh, as in the morning comes around, around 6.30 in the morning, you get heat generated uh, by the solar panel power, and that in turn switches the system off. So the whole system is completely fully automated. You don't need to do anything with it. This has the potential to run up to five years. Now you imagine if you are a livestock owner, say in particular, say a little old widow, she's got 10 sheep, right? And one night a leopard comes, takes two of your sheep. And a week later, hyenas come, they take the rest of your sheep. How do you feel? You're not going to feel very good, are you? So, if I come into the picture early enough and I set up the system, what it actually does, it gives the predator the impression that it is human activity, not just presence, not just people that are sleeping there, but people moving around to protect the livestock. Doesn't matter whether it's sheep or cattle or goats, whatever it is. And this combination of flashing lights, constant, is very irritating. Bear in mind that all the major predators, like your lions and leopard in particular, have very, very sensitive, very sensitive eyes. So this is a deterrent. The notion that there's a group of people walking around this boma, hey, I'm not going there, I'll go to the neighbor. Okay, so what we try and do 
is a series of installations within uh, proximity to each other where we possibly can and overall that acts as a deterrent. This is the last phase, we've done all the lights, we've put all the light stems in place, uh, we've tied it up a little bit. So now the last move is to put this, uh, this um, termite powder in the trenches. That stops the termites or other beetles and things from chewing the plastic. Uh, found it works very well because we then fill in the trench so it's buried with the cable and then we test it on the panel and then we go home and have a beer. Sounds good. <laughs> One of the things that we see with the increased population of people with the dry seasons coming on, the unpredict unpredictability, it's a good word, of the weather patterns, and progressively a lot of the, uh, the um, prey species, we call it, your grass gazelle, all the other sides, zebra, etc., many of them have moved out of this area. And so the resident predators, in particular in this location with your leopard and your hyena, what do they feed on? The only possibility is livestock. So we do the community a favor, we do them, the predators a favor, although they go a bit hungry, they still manage to find stuff to subsist on. One thing I would like to mention, right from three, just over three years ago, I was blessed, you could say. I was doing an installation. In the early years, I used to fund my own bombers, right, to the greater extent. Occasionally a few shillings here or there from different people. And I was doing an installation for an area chief on the periphery of Nairobi Park. And there was a lady who was visiting that bomber who happened to see this installation I'd done. I said, uh, what's, what's all this about? I said, well, and I told her the story of what, you know, effective it is and how it works and so on. So she said, you know, this is incredible. I said, this is my third visit to Kenya here. I love the lions, I love the wildlife. I would like to see if we could raise some money for you. That was over three years ago, and to date, funded by her organization and instigated by her, Diane, uh, Diane Bell Miller, her organization called Lion Lovers. You can find her on, on Facebook. We have done together nearly 270 installations. There's 270 families, communities, that are not any longer affected by predation on their livestock. Thank you, Diane Miller, that's, that's incredible. There have been other people in between, but that's, that was seriously a big blessing. Yeah. That's the way it is.